I'm almost trying to be Peter Pan in certain, <laughs> in certain ways. As though you trying to so recreate children who are fierce, no matter what they've experienced in life. I try to show you can mold that which you feel might have been a permanent scar that can be your own blessing or your own badge of honor. My name is Taliba Newman. I am a writer and director. I also produce a lot of my own projects. I lived in New York for 15 years and recently moved to Oakland, but my roots are in South Dallas. I had a great childhood. I was surrounded by love. There's a Malcolm X parade and a Martin Luther King parade. And some of my fondest memories are of those parades and going to get ready for the parade and the march. I was the oldest of five children. Me and my siblings have two different fathers, but for the most part, we've all grown up under the same roof. I've always been the second mother because my mother Nana's doing my hair. was always working. She worked herself off of welfare, and at first she worked out of her home, and then she was able to get her own shop. Having a mother who worked hard for the family and balancing both, I think as a woman, it was important to see. One of the biggest things I've learned from you, people aren't necessarily gonna be the people that they are today, tomorrow, so it's important to give people grace enough to transform. That's beautiful to me. This is my great-grandmother's house. My dad used to come to this house all the time and trim the hedges and keep it up. And this street is Brigham Lane, the title of one of my shorts. I sung a lot of songs. Mr. Gregory. What's happening, hot mama? About a young girl who sought to create a stronger relationship with her estranged father. You don't recognize me, Pop? Monifa. And a lot of my work, people may be struggling what happened? with different okay? phases of their life. But at the same time, I try to show a certain element of humanity, a certain element of hope. I'm sorry, Mo. It's fine, it's fine. <sighs> Listen, if I get you something to wear, you still come? <laughs> you just. You're just not gonna give up. No. I want to see growth. I want to see growth in black communities, in women. I want to see growth. Benjamin! With children and their relationships with their parents. Come here. And so Sweet Honey Child is a film about a young boy whose grandfather passes away and he goes on this journey with his grandfather's ex-lover. Right, right. That's what I'm talking about. Outstanding. And Honey Outstanding. and his mother, they clash. She doesn't agree with him linking up with Mr. Jolene. You keep the hell away from my kid. Faggot. And it explores what happens when a kid is expressing himself, but the world around him and the people around him that are supposed to be his safe space are not necessarily supporting him. The film is a conglomeration of a lot of different elements of my life. When my younger brother came out when he was a teenager, I don't think that my family was equipped with the tools to usher him into what he was experiencing. What I seek to honor in this film is him, my younger brother, and when I'm taking you on a journey. It's important to me to try to preserve the innocence of children, where you can be vulnerable, where you can experience life in the now and champion for the things that just are. We are going to make sure that we hit this scene tonight in the way that it needs to, to be portrayed. Okay, quiet on the set. Ayana Baraka, the fantastic DP, recently tapped me to be one of the directors for a passion project of hers called Greenwood Avenue. I just want to destroy everything we have and then just give us milk and cookies. No, thank you. A virtual reality experience based on the Greenwood Avenue massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921. Greenwood was a thriving community of black entrepreneurs who had created businesses and they had their own schools. But in 1921, in an attempt to destroy this entire community. Bombs were dropped, storefronts were set on fire, and hundreds of people were killed. 
This was one of the largest acts of white violence, yet is not really talked about. We're gonna make sure that it's very powerful and actually very scary. Um, and we're gonna make sure that we conjure up the energy of what we were one of on the first film crews to be able to film on Greenwood. I was tasked to direct some of the most difficult um, scenes of the series. One being a moment where marauders come and take the father of the family. There's a lot of violence in the scene. And so it was very high emotion, but I want to challenge myself and help to tell the story and help to bring it to the forefront. Laughing, yelling, get them, go, go, As it go. should be told and remembered using this new medium. Later, the community rebuilt itself. People still had the heart to come back from this, to not run away. And that just speaks to the resilience of the people in the community. Yeah, first thing, we're doing rehearsal. Oh, so. The art of filmmaking and the craft of filmmaking. I found the way to insert my voice. And whether it's the beauty, whether it's the pain, I see my people straight up. And sometimes it's really hard when you don't actually have immediate solutions to fix the things that you see going on around you. But I also think that it can be inspiring when telling stories because you try to be the voices of the people who don't necessarily have those tools. So I'm doing this work for them. <laughs>